Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I've been getting an onslaught of questions from people that are new to Denoise AI by Topaz Labs. So, I thought I'd do this video where I'm going to give you the very basics you need to get started using Denoise AI. I mentioned at the top that in this video, I'll be giving you the very basics you'll need to get started to use Denoise AI. So if you're experienced in Denoise AI, this video probably isn't for you. Also, judging from the emails I've been receiving, most of the people that are new to Denoise AI seem to be Lightroom users, and they're using Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin. So I'm going to start out in Lightroom and use Denoise AI. Denoise AI from there. What I'm going to be showing you in Denoise AI will still be applicable if you use it as a plugin in another application or if you're using it as a standalone app. Now, as you can see, I have an image in Lightroom. It's been shot at very high ISO, 12,800. And when I zoom in, you'll see that there is a considerable amount of noise. Now, what I recommend you do in Lightroom is do pretty much your normal processing, but I wouldn't add a lot of contrast. And I definitely wouldn't add any texture or clarity or even dehaze if possible. Also, I mean, you could put vibrance and saturation up if you want. That is optional. I also recommend that in the detail tab that you do not do any sharpening. You do not do any Lightroom luminance noise reduction. But I do recommend that you use Lightroom's color noise reduction. Uh, by default on most images, most RAW files, it will be at 25. And that works pretty well. If you notice, I'll zoom in now and you don't see any color noise. And let me take that color uh, noise reduction slider all the way down. Now you can see there's a lot of color noise. See the little blue and green dots mainly, a little bit of red. And if I push that up towards 25, you'll see it magically disappears. Lightroom's color noise reduction is very good. Now there is color noise reduction in Denoise AI as well, but I like to use Lightroom. It's up to you whether or not you do or not. Once I'm at this point, I am ready to send the image into Denoise AI. To do that from Lightroom, just right click right on the image, go down to Edit In, and over down to Denoise AI. And when you do that, you'll get a dialog box like this. Now, because this is a RAW file, I, my only option is to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. If it was a JPEG or a TIFF or a PSD, I'd have the option to edit a copy or edit the original. If you've done Lightroom edits to that non-RAW file, definitely do the top option, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Otherwise, if you just do edit a copy, those edits will not be included in the image that is sent over into Denoise AI. And edit original, I recommend you never use that if possible. Just use one of the other two. So we're going to use Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments, uh, TIFF format, Photo Pro Photo RGB, 16 bits per component, resolution of 360. That's recommended. Most people say anything above 240 is fine. If you use an Epson printer, Epson recommends to use 360 resolution throughout your work workflow. So that's why I have that there. And I use no compression and we'll click Edit. Now you see in the top left-hand corner, there is a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specs and it will open it up into Denoise AI. Now, once it opens up into Denoise AI, there's a number of different views you could see your image at. What I recommend you do, first of all, no matter what view you're in, is to move the little navigator rectangle over a part of the image that is critical. To me, it's the bird's eye and that background, which had a lot of noise in it. Then once you do that, you could go to the different views. Uh, if we go to single view and I click here, we're seeing one pane, one preview. And in this case, it's showing us the standard AI model because there's a number of different AI models. If I go to the split view, again, it's showing us that single standard AI model, but we have this little kind of before after bar we could move back and forth so there's after and there's before 
If I go to the one next to that, that is a side-by-side -side view, and it will show the original image on the left and the edited or the noise-reduced image on the right. I usually prefer to like to start out with comparison view because I could see all four of the available AI models at once. You could see here is the standard AI model. Next to it is the clear AI model, and you could see that the options change. Over here in the lower left is the low light AI, AI model, and in the lower right is the severe noise AI model. Now there is a raw model. You notice this was a raw file in Lightroom, but we sent over a TIFF, so it's no longer a raw file. If you use Denoise AI as a standalone application, it will read most raw files, except it will not read any Fuji raw files. So if you have Fuji, um, unfortunately, it won't be able to read those. Now in this case, because it was a TIFF file, I only have the four options available to me. Now let's go back to the standard and take a look at the settings. I have it set to auto. What it will do is Denoise AI will look at the image and will set the remove noise slider and the enhance sharpness slider to values it thinks fits this specific image in the noise that it has. If I go now to clear, you could see that I have that set to auto as well. And it still has remove noise and enhance sharpness, but they're like uh, little quick boxes. In the lower left, we have a low light model. Again, we have that remove noise and enhance sharpness sliders. I have that set to auto as well. And then finally, we have that severe noise and we have the same two sliders. This is, these are just different models, kind of the algorithms that Denoise uses to attempt to remove noise in an image. Sometimes one of these is superior to the others. I like to start out with all four of these on auto, so I'm comparing apples to apples. That way I'll look at it and I'll determine of these four on auto which one is best. And just glancing at it, it seems like it's between denoise, or I'm sorry, between severe noise and standard. Let's just, for the sake of this argument, say I'm going to go with severe noise. Then what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll tweak the adjustments. But before I do that, I make sure that is active. So you know it's active because it has this blue rectangle in the lower left-hand corner. And then I'll go to the single view. And it takes a second to render. You can see on the lower left, let it render, and there it is. Now I'll come in and I'll tweak these adjustments if needed. So I, if I need to remove more noise, I'll move it to the right. If I don't need to remove as much noise, I'll see if I can move it to the left if that is acceptable. Again, you have to wait for it to render in the lower left hand side. You have to wait till that says updated, so don't jump the gun. I'll put that back on auto for a minute. Let it render. Now, enhance sharpness, same thing. I could move it around to see, well, can I maybe eke a little more sharpness out of it? Now, if you do that, you might start to reintroduce noise, so you need to be careful that you don't. In this case, I don't think I did. Um, also below that, in post-processing, you could recover some of the original detail and you could remove that color noise reduction. Now, I already removed the color noise reduction in Lightroom, so I actually could zero that right out. If you didn't already remove color noise reduction, definitely check out the color noise reduction and see if you have to move this slider. Now, as far as recover original detail, this is the one, more so than enhanced sharpness, where if I move it to the right, I could really start to introduce that noise. So I have to be careful with this one. Um, it seems like I did start to bring in some of that noise again. So what I'll do is I'll just bring that down and just bring it up maybe just a little, see if that works. And really, that is all I do uh, to see you know, how it looks. Um, to see a before after, just click right on the image. There's before there's after. You also could click up here, this little square right here, before, after. So you could see that it did a great job removing noise. Now some more advanced features of Denoise AI are masking features, and I'll cover that in a future video. As I mentioned, this video is just the basics to help you get started using Denoise AI. Once I'm happy with it, I'll click Apply. Now you could see that it's applying uh, that noise reduction to that TIFF file. When we get back into Lightroom, we'll have two images here. I'm going to hit the F6 key so I bring up the film strip. I'll make it a little bigger so you can see what's going on here. This is our noise reduced image. 
zoom in. And this is our image with noise. Now let me um, go up to view and let me lock zoom position. That way when I click between the two, they'll stay in the same spot. So there is no noise, reduced noise, and there is the image with noise. Again, this is kind of the before and this is after. So I think you'll agree that it did a really nice job on this image. And I hope this helps those of you that are really quite new to Denoise AI get started using it. What I found is when I started using it, I was going through all these old wildlife images I had that I was, I had to shoot at a higher ISO that I thought, you know, weren't good enough because they had so much noise in them. I was able to really rescue those images. And I think you'll be able to do the same thing. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.